The urgent search underway in and around Dallas for nearly 100 people now who might have had contact with the patient. This is the scene outside the home where the patient's family is now quarantined. Tonight, workers hosing it down. A flyer being handed out to neighbors at that apartment complex with a list of symptoms, the fever, the rash for some people. And that flyer, not the only warning tonight. Right now, United Airlines is contacting hundreds of passengers who were on those flights with the patient. Amid new questions, did the patient reveal all before he boarded that flight? We do have team coverage tonight. Dr. Besser is standing by answering your questions again. But first, ABC Cecilia Vega live in Dallas and leading us off. Cecilia, good evening. David, good evening to you. That Ebola patient fighting for his life right here behind me. I spoke with his wife who is in quarantine right now. She told me today, I just want my husband to be well. Inside this apartment in Dallas, a family in quarantine. Relatives of the first person ever diagnosed with Ebola in the United States ordered by law not to leave, and we know they've tried. A police officer now posted outside, food and supplies delivered, even the walkways hosed down. Nobody is supposed to get, go inside the apartment. They are in their apartment. They cannot come out. Disease detectives now in a race to answer one question. How many people could one person have infected? Their investigation starts here with Thomas Eric Duncan in isolation at this Dallas hospital. He is patient zero. The CDC now tracking 100 people he may have come into contact with. First, the doctors and nurses who treated him. Then the three paramedics who brought him in by ambulance. That web expanding to anyone Duncan encountered, even briefly, including eight children. Anyone who visited that apartment, those at highest risk, his relatives now quarantined inside. About a dozen people will have their temperatures monitored for 21 days. And if any one of them exhibits symptoms, the chain begins again, this time retracing all of their contacts. That web being closely watched inside this emergency operations center in Dallas. This is an emergency message from the city of Dallas. Warnings going out by phone to more than 11,000 residents. While this may be concerning, there is no ongoing danger to your health. Today, three children who came into contact with Duncan sent home from school. One of the students who had close contact with the patient attends this elementary school. That child was in class as recently as Monday, and now everything you see behind me has been disinfected. Even after that scrub down, school attendance down today, a community on edge. Until it's, you know, all the way dies down, I think every parent's going to be worried. Especially here in the apartment where Duncan's family is quarantined. The sheets he slept on while sick and contagious still inside in plastic bags. No one has come to collect them. Another disturbing piece of information tonight. Liberian officials telling us that when Thomas Eric Duncan left that country, he filled out a form saying that he had not had contact with any Ebola victims. David, we now know that to be untrue. That's a big question. Okay, Cecilia leading us off again tonight. Our thanks to you. ABC's chief medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, is in the hot zone in Liberia, standing by to answer your questions tonight. The warnings about those flights now, the growing number of Americans, and they're now looking to monitor. But first, Rich takes us into that neighborhood where this patient was infected. How did it happen? Here's what Dr. Besser discovered. The story of Ebola in America starts here, in this neighborhood. I'm in a small courtyard. This is where Thomas Eric Duncan lived. He's the man who brought Ebola to Texas. In the late afternoon, he walks a quarter mile to this local health clinic. He's checking in on his neighbor, Martha Lean, 19 and pregnant. She's very sick. Nurses there showing us her chart. So she had weakness, poor appetite. Yeah, according to the Molo. Yeah, now, now she fainted. Continue. When Duncan arrives, the situation is grim. Martha Lean was not getting better. Her pressure was low. She was anemic. She had malaria. They said she needed to go to the hospital. So they called for help. They called for her car. Duncan helps lift Martha Lean into the taxi and climbs in with her. 20 minutes later, they arrive at the Ebola Treatment Center at JFK Hospital, a place where patients waiting, desperate to get in. No room for Martha Lean. They set up again, driving to the Elwa 2 clinic a half hour away. No room there either. They turned back home, returning here to their neighborhood. Eric Duncan helped her from the car. They went right from here all the way down to her house, that green house right there, and he helped her back to the house. Later that night, she died from Ebola. And by then, Thomas Eric Duncan has Ebola too. 
And Dr. Besser is with us now. That was just incredible, Rich, retracing the steps as he tried to help a neighbor there. And, and let's get right to the question so many viewers are asking here at home. First, that number tonight. They're now looking for up to 100 people he might have come in contact with here in the U.S. That number far higher than we were talking about last night here. What do you make of it, Rich? Well, it's, it's a frightening number, but when you're doing one of these investigations, you want to cast a very wide net. So you start with people who had very close contact, but then you expand to those who may have had casual contact to, just to make sure that they're going to be safe. And Rich, you heard us report there that United Airlines is now reaching out to hundreds of passengers who were on those flights. You have said that those flights were likely very safe. Is this simply an abundance of caution? Yeah, I, I do feel those flights are safe, but if I was on one of those flights, I would want to know that. And what it allows people to do is, is find out more information about risk and what to do if they have concerns. It really helps to build trust. So they're getting the word out. And, and this family, you heard Cecilia report there that the family might have tried to leave their apartment in Dallas. They've now been quarantined and that might sound harsh, but is that what you need to do to control this? Well, it is a harsh measure, but sometimes when there's a risk to the public, you have to take those those kind of measures. You don't like to do that, um, but it helps to make sure that they're there, they can be monitored. And Rich, I know your wife and your kids are back here at home, and we just want to assure everyone that you and the team are, are safe and, and doing okay over there. We're doing really well. I, I take every precaution uh, that, that I can, as does uh, my producer, Adam. All right, Rich Besser with us again tonight. Our thanks to you, Rich, and to our producer, Adam, right there in Liberia.